Thanks for the lift. I sure wish you were going all the way. Well, you're welcome, and uh, I sure worry about a young girl like you out here hitchhiking along by herself. I'll be okay. So long. Goodbye. Um... Goodbye. <laughs> Every one of them. Drives you right up the wall, right? Right, right. <laughs> Look, Joe, like I said, I always mind my own business. But when I meet someone who's gone through the same darn thing I have, I just want to help out. I mean, that's just the way I am. Do you understand? Oh, sure, sure. Well, then listen to me, Joe. The only way to get over a bad marriage or a breakup with anybody is to go right out and find somebody else right away. And I mean pronto. Oh, psychiatrists will give you a lot of junk about, you know, adjusting to failure and all that kind of stuff. But don't listen to them. What I say is, hey, get a load of that. <laughs> oh, Joe, these kids today drive you right up the wall, right? Yeah, right, right. How long have you been divorced now, Joe? You said... Well, I told you it's three months, right? Three months, right. Yeah, yeah. And what have you been doing all this time? I mean, just sitting around feeling sorry for yourself, I'll No, bet. no, not really. Yeah, well, then how many women have you been out with since uh, you busted up with what's-her-name? Well, actually... Uh, how I'm, many? Not, I've had much... None, right? That's right. right. And you know why, Joe? You know why? Because you're the sensitive type, Joe. That's it. You're sensitive, and you don't watch yourself, you're gonna end up on a psychiatrist's couch. I don't follow what you... Pick mean. up a girl, thin, dark, haired, brunette. Hey, oh, take one look at that. Oh. You know, I bet you don't even have a date for New Year's Eve, do you? Well, I haven't met too many people out here socially yet. Oh, come on, don't bull me, Joe. I know that you're lonely, you're unhappy, you're uptight, you're horny. Oh, now, wait a minute, Fred. So why don't you just do me and yourself a favor? Pick up a girl and check into a motel. A motel. Oh, yeah, that is the magic word. You just mentioned the word motel, and you know right off if you're in or out. I travel all the time, Joe. I know what I'm talking about. Motel is the secret word. Don't play grab bag with your life, Joe. Listen, Joe, I've got something for you. Telephone number. <laughs> this is computer dating service. They've got offices in all the major cities. Don't forget, Joe, we're studs, bulls. We can service any number of women. Live your life and don't look back, Joe. Oh, my gosh, I've got to run. My girlfriend's going to pick me up. Well, so long, Joe, and Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, Fred. I want you to know it's been a real pleasure meeting somebody on an airplane that you've got a genuine rapport with. So go out and get a boy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Ivan Wilds, white courtesy telephone, please. Ivan Wilds, white courtesy telephone, please. Hi. Well, hello. So you're getting off here, too? Yep, I live here. Do you? <laughs> well, I suppose they're going to have you flying New Year's Eve, I'll bet. No, I'm going to be off three whole days. Really? <laughs> Probably going to some big New Year's Eve party. No, I just want to spend a nice, quiet evening. You know, I've got a great idea. I, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of it before. I could get in my car and just drive up to Alice. Mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Maroney, I'd like you to meet my husband, George. George, this is Mr. Maroney. Well, how do you do? Glad to meet you. <laughs> Well, I hope we'll be flying together again sometime real soon. Oh, so do I. So do I. <laughs> Bye. Uh, goodbye. Lots 
Me going the other way? Yeah, I was coming back to pick you up. Far out. How come you didn't pick me up the first time? Oh, well, I was going too fast. The roads are pretty narrow. I bet you thought I was going to molest you. Yeah. I never picked a girl up before. On the highway, I mean. So I'm your first experience, right? Yeah, fine. I'm Ginger Brown. Joe Maroney, how do you do? Fine, how are you? How far are you going? Colorado Springs. My old man's a sergeant in the Air Corps there. He's a mechanic. Hadn't seen him in a couple of years. How far are you going? Uh, Denver. Out of sight. Can I ride all the way with you? Sure. Whew. One ride all the way to Colorado Springs. I do have to stop in Santa Fe. I, uh, there's some business I have to take care of. So we'll stop over. Okay. More coffee? Yes, please. Uh, no, thank you. Why couldn't I have another cup of coffee? Because coffee gives you wrinkles. Didn't you know that? No, I didn't know that. Well, did you ever see anybody with, with wrinkles that didn't drink a lot of coffee? I don't think so. Look over there. Hmm? Look over there. See what I mean? Look at me. I don't have any wrinkles, and I don't even drink coffee. I never thought about that. You better think about it. <laughs> there she know now, what does she know about my cherry red? So listen, people, while I sing this song about how the food and drug gone wrong. Poison without any warning. Why I had a bowl of maraschino this morning, and now I do about a bag a day. Oh, I can't go on straight out this way. You don't get high, no, you just die. Yes, sir, there's motel, all right. Maraschino now. Well, I'll see if they've got a couple of rooms. I won't tell my mother if you won't tell yours. <laughs> okay, it's a deal. Well, it's hard enough for my mother and daddy to accept me as a hippie, much less a kept woman. Right. Hey, Joe? Yes? Will you get adjoining rooms? Adjoining rooms? Yes, yeah, so we can talk through the connecting door. Evening. Good evening. Like a room? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I'd like two rooms. Uh-huh. That's my sister. She's uh, traveling with me. And you'd like adjoining rooms? Adjoining rooms, yes. Uh, that'd be fine. Just fine. Well, I'm sorry to say we've only got one room left. Oh. A unit with twin beds. Oh. Well, I could give you a screen. 
This would give you and uh, your sister a, a semblance of privacy. A screen. Yes, that is a thought. Uh, I have to discuss it with my sister, naturally. Oh, naturally. Would you like to uh, see the room? See the room? See the room. Uh, then no, on second thought, I think uh, I'd better try somewhere else. <laughs> it's the holidays, you know. Everything's filled. Yes, well, if we uh, can't find anything else, we may be back. Thank you. Well, good luck. You're going to need it. Yeah. They only had one room. Did it have twin beds? Well, yeah, why? Well, remember that old movie? What, about twin beds? Yeah, with Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. I saw it on the late show once. Yeah, it happened one night. Yeah, that's it. Well, why don't we do it like they did? Well, like what? We could pose as man and wife and get a rope and a blanket and make a barrier between the beds. Rope and a blanket? Yeah, wouldn't it be a gas? As long as you don't have a toy trumpet, I'm safe. <laughs> toy trumpet? Don't you remember at the end of the movie when Gable blew on the trumpet and the walls of Jericho came tumbling, tumbling down? <laughs> yes, I remember, I remember. for dinner? You don't pass up a meal just because what the clock says. Right. Two for dinner? Yes, please. Which way to the ladies' room? Top of the stairs to the right, miss. Thank you. You try to behave while I'm gone, will you? Yes, I'll try. Brown, Miss Goldbrick's School of Pedigree Young Ladies. You look lovely. Thank you. Shall we, darling? I get a horse. I don't know if they serve horse in the menu, madam, but if not, we'll certainly send out for one. May I take your drink orders? No, thank you. A scotch and soda, please. Right. Thank you. Can I have anything I want? Why not? Far out. Joe? Hmm. Are you married? No. At least not anymore. Why do you ask? Your wedding ring. Why don't you take it off? It might make you feel better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That looks good. What are you doing? You know what this is? Whipped cream. Wrong. It's all synthetic. Didn't you ever read on the can what's in this stuff? Never... You should. There's not anything in here that ever came close to a cow. Well, that won't kill you, will it? It's not the point. The point is, you are what you eat. All right. Uh, no coffee, thank you. <laughs> What's in the No, thank you. The fellow I met on the plane today said that after a divorce, you should go out and have a, a lot of affairs. What do you think about that? Sure, if you're that kind of guy. But I don't think you're that kind of guy. Hasn't there been anybody, I mean, since you and Marcy busted up? Oh, well, that's... No. You want to see a picture of Clayton? Sure. Looks like John the Baptist, doesn't he? Very handsome. Beard and all. Oh, is he a, a good guy? Yeah. One of the best. 
How about Marcy? Is she pretty? Yeah. It's a picture of her. Wow. We got a couple of terrific hang-ups. <laughs> No wonder you keep her pictures. She probably keeps you warm on cold nights. No. On cold nights now, I just sit by the fire. Hey, they have one in there. Come on. private ceremony and burn this picture. My mother's Irish, my father was Italian. Mother felt that since Marcy wasn't Irish, Italian, or Catholic, that's why the marriage failed. To her, it was that simple. Mm -hmm. What kind of a guy is Clayton? Crusader, which is okay. I mean, I'm against a lot of things, man, a lot of things. But he's gonna get his head busted in, or he's gonna end up in jail before he's 30. I just don't dig violence in any form. If I'm gonna throw a bomb, it's gonna be a love bomb. And if I'm going to trip out, it's going to be a love trip. You know what I mean? I think so. I still have faith in my fellow human beings, and so far, I'm right. Go out loud, so far. <laughs> it's really weird, though. People are more afraid of love than hate. And love's so much stronger than hate or violence. It's just a lot harder to come by. I guess that's true. What's this? A surprise. Thank you. What's it called? It's called Irish coffee. You know what I told you about coffee? It's just a name. I mean, a fog cutter doesn't have fog in it, does it? I'll give it a try. Tastes pretty good. Hmm. I think this has booze in it. My golly, I think you're right. <laughs> mm. Just take a gulp of that, man. <sighs> Fantastic. Do you know what's wrong with this country? No, what's wrong with this country? No exercise. People just stuff themselves and they plop down in front of their TV set or they just go right off the bed. It's a serious national problem, no doubt about it. Yeah, people should run, walk, or jog right after every meal. <sighs> right. Right after? Yeah, right after. <gasps> I like to run. You want to? Now? Yeah, right now. Yeah, okay. On your mark, set, go. Well, no, wait, wait. All right. really something. I feel 100% worse than I did when I started. Oh, you. Hey. I just remembered something. Well, how could it be so stupid? I've got a friend who lives here in Santa Fe. He's got a place here. Far out. Can you stay with him? Well, no. I mean, yeah, he, uh, he left me the key to the store, and he's away for the holidays. Oh. Yeah. He said if I was passing through, I could stay at his place. Imagine me forgetting a thing like that. Imagine. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What are we sitting here freezing for? I don't know. right back. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to wish you uh, a very happy new year. Happy new year too, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Your friend lives here? God, this is his house? Oh, it's just a duplex apartment. He rents half of it. Out of sight. Thank you. What do you expect? Running around a parking lot in freezing weather. It's cold in here. Come on, I'll start a fire. Okay. I think we were sweating out of a motel room. That's really weird. I can't imagine what I was thinking. Soon <sighs> uh, Gotta get a fire started. Look at all the mail this guy gets. I'll take care of that. Uh, take a look around. Make yourself at home. Okay. Hey, this guy's very artistic. I'd like to meet him. You would? Yeah. Hey, this picture has your name on it. Uh, this fellow's very fond of my work. All these paintings have your name on them. Well, he's, uh, he's very fond of my work. Joe. Sometimes people play games with people. You're too much. You're a different kind of cat. I swear, I never met anybody like you before. That's a vanishing breed. You're beautiful. You really are beautiful. Would you believe that uh, nobody ever told me that before? Nobody ever told me that either. Join the club. Too <laughs> <laughs> uh. tight. What are you doing? I'm taking off your shoes. I'm taking off my shoes. Do you have any Vicks Viper rub? Well, yeah, I think so. Why? I'm gonna give you a foot bath and rub your chest. You are? Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, look, I don't think I got a cold exactly. It's uh, my sinuses. After 10 years in New York, they just can't get used to the shock of clean air. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <sighs> Either that or I'm allergic to that damn Christmas tree. <laughs> I never saw a brown Christmas tree before. Brown, yeah. Well, it's uh, brown because it's dead. I bought it the day after Thanksgiving. You're kidding. It was a lousy Thanksgiving. I thought it might cheer me up. This year, I was going to have a really great New Year's. I was going to spend it with my old buddy, Charlie McLean. But I called his ranch in Texas, and they said he'd gone down to Mexico. What kind of guy is Charlie? Charlie? That's a, a picture of the two of us. We were in Korea together. You didn't kill anybody, did you? Me? No, no. I don't think so. No, Charlie and I were two of the biggest goof-offs in the whole outfit. <laughs> There's never a dull moment when old Charlie's around. I mean, it's... It's wild. It's uh, really wild. One day I'd like you to... meet old Charlie. Mr. McLean, this is highly irregular. Well, I just wanted to wish you a happy new year properly. Well, you wouldn't want me to lose my job, would you oh, now? Of course not. And don't you worry your sweet little head about it. Say, how would you like to come with me and meet my best pal? I'm sorry, we're leaving for Albuquerque in 10 minutes. Doggone the luck. He's going to be awful disappointed. Well, next time, OK? Oh, we'll see. Now, happy new year. Uh, same to you, honey. Oh, and uh, put this on my bill, will you? Thank you, sweetheart. Man, does this feel good? Hey, do you mind if I wash out a few things? Anything you want. How long have you lived here? I just moved out from New York about uh, three months ago. Why Santa Fe? Well, it's a beautiful country. I always wanted to live here. You sure dig Indians, don't you? Navajo. They're fantastic people. The language is very poetic. Do you know they got the same word for hope and love? Hard rain is masculine rain, and gentle rain is feminine. And that's far out. You know, I'm a poet. I write songs and poems. I never knew a real poet before. That's just about all I have in my suitcase. Hey, very nice. Thanks for the loan. My pleasure. Oh. 
<laughs> very nice. Very nice. You should open a clinic. You're very good at this. I gotta pay for my supper, don't I? Right. Right. <laughs> Towel, please. Yes, ma'am. What is that? Oh, it's a project of mine. It's a model of a new type of city I've been working on. Tell me about it. Well, I believe, as most of our greater architects do, that cities are dead and dying, and to just keep building new buildings on top of the ruins is not the answer. So what is the answer? Lifestyles and structures that enhance nature instead of destroying it. That's terrific. Have you told anybody about it? I mean, I bet the president or the governor or Congress or somebody would like to hear about it. Well, it's, it's not a new or original idea. I mean, everybody... Uh, Who cares? It's important and it's necessary. You've got to promise me you'll do something about it. <laughs> okay, I promise. I think somebody made you up. You know, for a backward cat, you say a lot of heavy things. <laughs> Joe, hmm. let's have the ceremony. What ceremony? Part of photographs. Good idea. Goodbye, Clayton. Goodbye, Marcy. Nine years up in smoke. What are you doing New Year's Eve? Nothing. What are you doing? I'd like to stay here, spend it with you. You know what? What? I'm going to start picking up lady hitchhikers regularly. Joan, I said I wanted to stay here with you. I meant with you. I just want to make that clear, because... I know, I know. I'm a little slow, and we'd uh, waste an awful lot of time. Yeah. yeah. I need you. I dig you. I think you dig me. I dig you a lot. The saddest thing is to wake up, and there's nobody. So we'll just spend a couple of lovely days and nights together, and then I'll split. Okay. You're not sure? Oh, no, I'm sure. Good. <laughs> now, I'm gonna go upstairs and get on some clothes and uh, get some things for breakfast. Is that little market open? Yeah, till midnight. Uh, look, uh, I can go. Uh-uh, but I'll eat some bread for groceries. Bread for groceries, You're right. Bread, bread for groceries, right. <laughs> I'm gonna fix your breakfast, you'll never forget. Hey, uh, don't you run out on me. Don't worry. Uh, remember, I've got your suitcase, and all your paperbacks, and your poems. That's sure pretty. You people sure know how to decorate a town. Gracias, senor.
see you. It's really good to see you. Yes, Charlie. I come in on a champagne flight. I come all the way from Mexico to celebrate New Year's Eve with you. Yes, Charlie. <laughs> Surprise the fire out of you, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you sure did. You certainly have. <laughs> hey, don't you smell pretty. Yeah, well, you I... wouldn't expected me, was you? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I wasn't. <laughs> you old Texas rat. <laughs> Charlie, uh, boy, you're looking good. You know that? You are looking good. Yeah, well, why didn't you give me a call? Let me know you were coming. <laughs> what? Waste good money on phone calls when you can spend it on booze and women? You gotta be kidding. <laughs> hey, look at this place you got here. You living out here like a high dalgo, son. Hey, look at all them candles. What you having here, an Irish wake? <laughs> Charlie, uh, I gotta tell you. Wait, excuse me a minute. Uh, hey, Salvador, mi amigo's in la casa, so bring in those bags. Muy pronto. Si, si, I got all the bags. Charlie, and don't rub to yourself, son. Bring them in one at a time. No, wait a minute, Charlie. i got to explain something to you. What's that? What, what, what? Sounds like Niagara Falls. Hey. Good grief. Oh! Uh, Charlie. You old rapscallion, you. You got a little dolly here somewhere, haven't you? Where you got her hid, boy? I wasn't. She went to the market. Charlie. Oh, my goodness. She must be getting awful cold without her little things on. Charlie, it's not the way you think. Tiny little rascal, ain't she? Yeah, but Charlie, it's not the way you think. Listen, I'm as happy as a clam about it. And I'm not going to get in the way either. I'll just sneak out to a picture show or someplace as soon as she turns up. Hey, senor. I got all these bags. All the bags? Charlie? Hey, <laughs> Salvador, you're liable to strain something, son. Not very big, but I'm very strong. Just put those bags down there anywhere, boy. Know, Charlie, wait, please. Hey, Salvador, I'd like for you to meet me compadre here, Jose Maroni. Uh, Joe, this is Salvador Rodriguez. He drove me all the way here from the airport. Very good. Thank you, Salvador. Show me Salvador, this is me amigo grande, Jose Maroni. Please. Very pleased to meet you, Salvador. Charlie, we listen to the Hey, please? sit down there, boy. Take a load off your feet and have some of this champagne. No, Charlie, hey, fellas, wait a minute. Give me a drink. Hey, nice fellow. Charlie, will you listen to me for just a second? Now, look, you've got to clear out of here with all this stuff. And your friend, too. It's nothing personal, Salvador. And you, too, Charlie. you got to clear out right now. Look, I already told you I'm going to clear out. And then I'll sneak back in here, quiet as a little mouse, and I'll crash out on the couch but up Charlie, there. Charlie, Charlie, that's not going to work. Look, if you think I'm going back out of this blue northern boy, you're crazy. Hey, I That's don't exactly get what this. You're have I don't to do. get this at all. Do I send you to a hotel when you come down home to visit me? No, huh? no, Charlie, and I'm just as sorry as I can be. But this is a very special thing, Charlie, and I'll explain it all later. Well, I'm not going to interfere. Shucks, maybe she's got a girlfriend she can fix me up with. I'm human too, you know, right, Salvador? <laughs> hey, very nice fellas. <laughs> Gracias, amigo. Right? Charlie, will you pay attention, please? Now, this is not some broad coming up here. Charlie, this is a very lovely, a very sweet, a very young girl. And you're gonna louse up the whole deal unless you leave, right now. Hey, wait a minute. You haven't gone and fallen in love with somebody, oh, have you? Charlie. You just got yourself out of nine years of bondage, boy. Yeah. Stay out. Right, Charlie, you don't know the girl, you don't know the situation. I don't have to know the girl or the situation. Charlie, listen to me, please. You stop that, you're giving me a headache. Charlie. I picked this girl up on the highway a few hours ago. She's, uh... A hippie, hitchhiker. <sighs> he put me on. No, no, I'm not. Picked up a hippie, hitchhiker? Yep. I don't believe it. Well, it's true, okay. Uh, I'm a little desperate, huh? Well, look, Charlie, I've been without a woman for three months. Oh, you poor boy. Yeah. No wonder you're looking so wall-eyed and jumpy. Well, you think she's a sure thing? Sure thing. Sure, she's a sure thing, Charlie. She already asked me. She asked you? Sure. Well, <laughs> man, you got yourself a real hot number. That's right. A real hot number. Now, Charlie, will you clear out and yeah. just give me a call? Come on, Salvador. Let's bomb a nose, boy. Yeah. Come on. Hi, honey. Joe is just telling me some lovely things about you. I heard. Uh, Ginger, this is my old buddy, Charlie. I know. Uh, Ginger, this is Salvador Rodriguez. Uh, let me take those things. Honey, uh, Salvador and me are just going. Uh, I'm staying over here at the hotel. Then why'd you bring your bags up? My bags? Oh, 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 my bags. 
Well, I almost forgot. <laughs> I brought Joe and you too, honey, some fresh, homemade, country smoked deer meat sausage. I can't wait for y'all to see these sausages. Why don't you just pay the driver, Charlie? What about my hotel? Why don't you just pay the driver and let him split? There's about half a dozen ways out of this situation, and we didn't seem to hit on one of them. If you'll wait a minute, you can drop me at the bus station. Ginger. Here's your change, and uh, thanks for the ride. Now you see what you've done. Look, uh, I'll fix this up in no time. Oh, you've already fixed it. If she leaves here because of you, old buddy, that's it. We're through. Kaput, finish, count on it. Hold this. Hmm. Salvador? You gotta split, old buddy. Hey, senor, but the senorita... Never mind the senorita. Uh, I'll explain it to you later. Hey, senor! Uh, you keep the champagne at the yeah, sir. Happy New Year! Yeah, Happy New Year to you. No, it's your fault. Where's the cab driver? Oh, he had a split, honey. He was double parked. Thanks a lot. Then I'll just walk. No, 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 no. No, no wait, Deb. Look, look, honey. <laughs> this is... This is all my fault. No, it's not. It's my fault. I asked for it. Uh, Ginger, wait. I... I don't know what you heard, but I promise you. Promise me what? That you'll take something beautiful and make it ugly? A sure thing you picked up on the road? A hot number? Now see what you've done? Don't blame him. It's you. You just stood there. At least Charlie tried. He tried and he had to lie. I won't forget that, Charlie. Honey, what are friends for? It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't believe it. This is all gonna come out in the wash. Charlie, will you knock it off? Now you've done enough damage for one day. What do you keep yelling at Charlie for? Did it help anything to keep yelling at him? She's right, Joe. I'm just a victim of circumstance. You? Now, wait a minute. I'm the victim. I've already convicted. I didn't even get a trial. Why did you have to say all those awful things? Because I was desperate. Because it's the only kind of language this drunken bum understands. Well, now, that hurt, boy. That really did. Did you know that today was the most beautiful day of my whole life? I believed you. And to think that all I was to you was just a little... Oh, my God. Look, I just met you. But from what Joe tells me, and from what I can see with my very own eyes, I know you're just the sweetest, most decent kind of a little girl that any lucky man would ever hope to meet. Thank you. That's very sweet. It's incredible. Shh. Now, everything is gonna be honky-dory. Just remember, I'm part of the family. And <laughs> the thing that you think is... So awful now is going to seem just like angel food cake tomorrow morning. Everything is ruined. No, no, now it's not. Now, look, you just go on in the bedroom there and you go to bed. And Joe and me are going to stay out here, aren't we, Joe? We're all going to sleep on this thing and tomorrow it's going to turn out just fine. You gotta go. Uh, Joe, uh, ask her nice to stay. Ginger, please stay. Uh, please. Come on, honey. I'll stay if you'll stay, Charlie. Well, if that's what you want. And don't worry, I won't contaminate your bed. I'll sleep on the floor. That is the silliest damn thing I've ever heard. Easy, boy, now easy. Just go on in there to sleepy bye. Don't worry. I'll leave first thing in the morning. No, sir. Tomorrow we're going to just love each other to pieces and bring in that baby New Year. You really are a groovy guy, Charlie. <laughs> Tomorrow when I'm sober, you won't be able to stand me. Not a chance. Good night, honey. Um, good night. Good night. Everything is possible through faith. Is your insurance paid up? Well, now, that's gratitude for you. I just averted a disaster here. There's no justice. 
Charlie, are you planning to flop here indefinitely? You know, you're just a bundle of nerves. Answer the question. I forgot what it was. Are you going or aren't you? Well, I don't see how I can. I promised that sweet little thing in there I'd stay. I can't leave for your sake. Charlie, old buddy, our friendship has survived some incredible tests over the years, but this one, this one tops them all, and I swear, I'm gonna get you for this if it's the last thing I ever do. You're just disappointed. That's why you're saying ugly things you don't mean. What is this thing? What the hell does it look like? It's a Christmas tree. Well, it's not anymore. It's now an incinerary bomb. Charlie, will you get out of here so I can think of a way to clear up this mess? You better just cool it for a while, old buddy. What a mess. What a ridiculous mess. If it'll make you feel any better, I'll tell you some of my problems. Oh, Charlie. It always makes me feel a whole lot better to find out somebody else is in worse shape than I am. You want to know how I spent my Christmas? Not particularly. I spent my Christmas all alone with just my old dog and a couple of drunk cowboys. Sandy Claus didn't bring me nothing but a big old sack of heartache. Charlie... Maybe I wasn't a model husband, Joe. I I'll admit that, but I was a darn good father. And I love those kids, Joe, and I miss them. Shucks. In cold winter nights like this, I even miss old sugar. Oh, my God. You don't even care what's happening to me, do you? Charlie, will you please go so I can think? Joe, I think it's high time I told you about my discovery. Your discovery. <clears throat> do you know what at least 85% of the joy derived from sex is? Now, look, I figured this out all by myself, but I am certain that science will bear me out. 85% of the joy derived from sex is nothing in the world but anticipation. Jesus, man, don't you realize that the longer you prolong this thing, the finer it's going to be when it finally happens? Charlie, I'm warning you, go to a hotel now. You know, actually, I'm a blessing in disguise. Well, if you weren't drunk, I'd clobber you. Do you honestly believe that this temporary little setback with that precious little thing in there is going to end your romance? Why, no, boy. Charlie. It's just going to make it all the better. Because anticipation is going right to work. I don't believe this. I don't believe it. Look, don't you realize that she's all curled up in there right now, in Charlie. your bed, just throbbing and pulsating with love Charlie, for you? that's enough. I just tingle all over when I think about it. I'm warning you, Charlie. Do you think all this powerful love is going to waste? Why, no, boy. It's just getting all stored up minute by minute and hour by hour. It's Charlie, I'm warning you. Building and growing and warming and throbbing. Charlie. And when y'all finally do get together, pow wee wee What's going on? Are y'all trying to kill each other? Charlie, why? Why did you have to come here now, of all times? Don't you know, boy? I'm lonely. I just had to be with somebody on New Year's Eve who cares about me. Morning, buddy. <clears throat> Morning. Hello. Joe? Yeah. Hey, Joe. Sugar here. Well, hello. Hey, this is a surprise. Where are you? Albuquerque. I got a half-hour layover here, so I thought I'd just call and wish you a Happy New Year. Well, a Happy New Year to you, too. Kids and I were in Honolulu for Christmas, and uh, I sent them on ahead to stay with Mother in Dallas for a few days, and... Uh... Hey, well, Joe, darling, how are you? I've missed you. Oh, and I've missed you, too, honey. Uh, say, have you heard from our old friend lately? Uh, if you mean my darling ex, the wandering mud king, no. Uh, 
hasn't paid his child support in over five months. <laughs> I'd sure like to lay my hands on him. You know, it's funny you should say that. It's funny you should say that. Charles is there with you? That's right. Look, honey, would you uh, hold on for just a second? I'm going to take this in the other room. Don't hang up. Who's that? An old friend. wonder who that was. I hope it was a girl. I heard him call somebody honey. After breakfast, I better split. Nothing doing. You're not going anywhere. I'll see you later. Hey, where are you going? Go oh, out for a little while. Well, wait a minute. That's not very hospitable. You got company here. Well, you two seem to get along just fine. I won't be here when you get back. So goodbye. Now, wait a minute. We got a date tonight. Regardless of how you feel about me, you got to keep it. I mean, fair is fair. Well, what about me? Somebody's got to fix me up with somebody. I'm working on that right now, old buddy. As a matter of fact, I may have you fixed up with one of those real hot numbers you like. Yeah? Yeah. Here's a little souvenir from the island. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> oh, sugar. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing this. Oh, are you kidding? After what that so-and-so's done to me, I wouldn't miss a chance like this for all the lays in Honolulu. You're one heck of a fine cook, honey. You know that. If I was around you for long, I'd be as big as a barn. You really like it? Mm-hmm. But you didn't eat nothing, hardly. No, I'm not very hungry. Oh, darling. Don't you know that things between men and women never end abruptly like this? They just usually fizzle out. What's on your mind, honey? I gotta tell somebody. Well, I'm somebody. I'm going to have a baby. Oh. How is he, Joe? Still drinking? Well, he's, uh... Yeah, he's still drinking. Well, if you left him with this girl you picked up, all I can say is, lots of luck. Oh, come on, sugar. Now, Charlie's got his bad points, but he wouldn't try anything like that. Want to put some money on it? No. <laughs> Are you serious? Absolutely. If things don't work out between you and Joe, I'll marry you and give that little shaver of yours a good name. You're crazy. You don't even know me. You're an exceptionally fine little woman. And I don't care if the kid is mine or not. A kid is a kid. That's far out, Charlie, but I guess I just better go this alone. And don't say anything to Joe about it, okay? <laughs> You're something else. You know that. Charlie, let's make tonight special, okay? How come? I don't know. It's just important to me. Whatever you say, kid. Give me five. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie. Here's that red hot number I promised you. Hello, Charlie. Well, now, how about that? Isn't this a lovely surprise? Mr. Maroney, I have your table right here, sir. Good. Excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Russell. Well, what would everybody like to drink? Well, it's New Year's Eve. Let's celebrate. A whole bottle of champagne, waiter, a whole mega. With what you've been drinking, Charlie, and it's pronounced magnum. I don't care if it's pronounced boxcar. We want the biggest bottle you got. For a man who was dying of loneliness less than two hours ago, you've made a remarkable recovery, Charlie. Well, why not? Being reunited with my darling sugar and meeting little Ginger here and discovering that my best pal has this delightful sadistic streak, that's enough to rekindle the spirits of any man. Paper hat and ah. wine. Well, that's fun. <laughs> Charlie, since you're the mud king, you get to wear the crown. You know it, baby. And I'm a little, here's a little dunce cap for you, darling. Thank you, darling. Your thoughtful nature is something I've really missed. Have you now? You're looking good, sugar baby. You put on a little weight, didn't you, honey? That Italian boyfriend of yours must be feeding you lots of spaghetti and macaroni and stuff. Did you know about him? Oh, society column. That's the way I keep up with you and my kids these days. Why don't we dance? Oh, uh... Let's see if Charlie can stand up first. Oh, no, wait. Let's have a champagne first. Hey, wait, let me do this. I'm an expert at this. You got to watch out, Joe. This thing. Ow! <laughs> Saludos, amigos. 
Toast here. Happy New Year. Captain. Sir. I'd like to buy a round <coughs> of mariachis for the margarita band. They look parched. Yes, sir. God love you. Would you like to dance? Sure. Mm. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> hey. Sugar baby, shall we trip for life fantastic? We shall trip. I can promise oh, you, you that. You are a darling thing, aren't you? Come on. Oops, watch it. You're not mad anymore? No, I don't stay mad long. I'm sorry the way things... If Charlie hadn't arrived, maybe... I'm glad he did. I learned some things. Ginger, you know I didn't mean what I said. Or even what you thought I might have said. Tonight's fun night, okay? Tomorrow I'll split. No problems. You feel mighty good, sugar baby. Mighty good. Do I? Mm -hmm. How can you tell the difference between all us girls anyway? Oh, I can tell. How's little Joe? Pretty soup. They're fine. Did you have a nice Christmas? They loved your presents. Good. Good. Tell me about your uh, dress designer. It's really none of your business, Charlie. Oh, I think it is if he's going to be my kid's new daddy. Did you hear that? Gossip columns? Well, I really don't care to discuss it. Well, I think we'd better. He's going to try to fill my shoes. I think we'd better. Charlie, let's sit down before you fall down. Uh, I'll tell you what, let, let's change partners. I want to dance. Come on. Excuse me. I could sell out and have a little money left to go in on a ranch down in Sonora. And I want you to come in with me. A ranch? Yeah. Hey, well, Charlie, I don't know one end of a cow from the other. Oh, Joe, you learn ranching in no time. And it's beautiful down there, man. It's wild and beautiful. We could live like kings down there. Charlie's a barrel of laughs, huh? Well, you just try living with a barrel of laughs, honey. I am still in the mud business anyway, and I'm moving to Mexico. You're not selling anything, Buster. That company belongs to me. Well, listen, we better get out fast before you end up with a big old half of nothing. You're drunk, Charlie. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, why don't you just come and take a look at the books, Mama Cita? You watch your language. What did I say? I say nothing. Look, we're trying to have a party, okay? I'm having fun. Hey, man, will you pour me another glass of champagne? Oh, she's had enough, Charlie. Oh, give a little lady a drink. And why don't you go to the restroom, wash your face, and comb your hair? You look like a wild man from Borneo. And why don't you go on a diet? You look like a fat lady in a sideshow. Oh! Oh, my God! Oh, my leg is just... Oh, I think Charlie. she broke my dog on the leg. Oh, Maroni. Oh, oh, get your rap, will you? Mr. Maroni. I know. We're going I, I hate to say this, but I'm afraid you and your people are going to have to take a more secluded table. Just bring it to check, please. Come on. Yeah, that won't be necessary. I'll mail it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Come on. We're going to get a doctor. Come on, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't care if I am crippled. I'm clearing out, and I'm going to Mexico. You could go to Timbuktu, as far as I'm concerned, but you're not selling the mud business. Oh, wow, this is the first time I've ever been kicked out of a restaurant. Falling down drunk. Falling down drunk? I was kicked over. And you have turned into an alcoholic. Oh, shut up. I divorced you to stop you from bugging me, so stop bugging me. This is turning out to be one of the truly great New Year's Eve parties. No, I'm not. Not a nickel till I can see my kids any time I want to see them. That's not what the judge said. You know what you can do with a judge, honey. You don't need my money. It's spite, pure spite. That's all it is. You have a responsibility, Charlie. They are your kids. They are not my kids, not anymore. And the next time your old lady, that precious daddy of yours, won't let me see them, I'm going to kidnap them. You just try that, and I'll have you put away so far, they'll have to feed you with a bean shooter. To one hell of a party. You invited her, I didn't! Well, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Well, good, because I don't want to talk about it either. 
Why aren't you out at some cheap honky-tonk with one of your car hops or your cocktail waitresses? Any car hop I know is a better woman than you are, sweetheart. Male menopause, that's what's the matter with you. No other woman ever locked me out of a bedroom but you, sweetheart. Oh, well, that's because they were cheap and I had pride. I wasn't about to compete with every ticky tail car hop in the whole country. I gave you ten wonderful years. No, you gave me about two, actually, and then you went frigid on me. There are no frigid women, Charles. Only clumsy, selfish men. Did your psychiatrist tell you that? You caused me to go to one. You did it with all your catting around. Oh, bull, bull, bull. I never catted around. You locked me out. Lie, lie, lie. Using your sex like a door prize. If I didn't jump every time you said jump. Kick a lock, baby. Oh, you tee out. That is a bald-faced lie. No, it ain't. Other things become more important to you than me. Your social work, your political causes, activities. You didn't have time for me. You stopped being a woman and turned into a machine. Well, when you did, you turned me out the pasture, honey. Well, I pastured. Let me tell you, I pastured! I hate you. I hope everybody's having a good time. And I hope you rot in hell. Well, I ain't. Not just yet, anyway. Because I'm going to Mexico. And if Joe doesn't marry a little ginger here, I will. And give that little shaver of hers a good name and teach him to grow up like a man. That's what I'm going to do. Little shaver. Charlie. Sorry, honey. Gonna find out sooner or later, anyhow. You promise. What little shaver is he talking about? I'm gonna have a baby in about seven and a half months. You're a surprise a minute, aren't you? You know who the father is? Yes. That fellow we cremated yesterday? Yes. Does he know the child is his? Yes. He doesn't want children. He doesn't think a child should be subjected to the world the way it is today. Oh, he doesn't? Well, then he should be celibate, don't you think? Or maybe let you know about the pill? I know about the pill. I want this baby. What about a father? Or are you in the market for one, is that it? I mean, you're gonna just keep sleeping with strange men until you find oh, someone who... Honey, let's go to the hotel. We don't have to stay here to be insulted. How can you be so dumb? Hey, you're right. It's not every day I pick up a pregnant hitchhiker. Thanks for the swell party, fellas. And tomorrow, if I don't get my child support, I report you to the judge. Good riddance, you old bitch! Pregnant. Stupid broad. Pregnant. Dumb broad. Happy New Year, Charlie. Happy New Year, Joe. Let's go out and have ourselves some fun. No, Charlie, I don't feel much like it. Well, we're out of booze. What kind of New Year's are we gonna have? We don't get some more booze. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's go out and have ourselves some fun, even if it kills us. <laughs> Why not?
It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Fantastic. That's very beautiful. pretty. Very pretty. Beautiful. Joe. Joe? Yeah? Do you know what old Lutz said to his wife when he looked back and saw that she'd turned into a pillar of salt? No, what did old Lutz say when he looked back and saw his wife's salt? He said, honey, I sure hate to tell you this, but you have turned into a pillar of salt. That's a joke? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar should be belted every now and then. Who do you think you're kidding? Sugar is tougher, meaner, than you and me put together. You never laid a hand on her. I did so. I knocked the fire out of her once. What'd you hit her with? That old buddy. Right smack on his jaw. She saw stars for a week. Yeah? <laughs> she, she danced around, yelled like a banshee. You thought I'd killed her. It was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> what did she do then? Huh? What did she do then? Oh! Well, she uh, naturally hit me back. <laughs> what did she hit you with? A golf club. Golf club? A number nine iron. Right across the top of my head, she almost fractured my dad blamed skull. <laughs> <laughs> She wants the doggone funny. Look, seven <laughs> stitches in my scalp. Look at that. Would you look at that? You came that close to, to losing the best pal you ever had. <laughs> Man, look. Look at those boys over there. They're drinking the liquor in this park. Now, that's against the law. God bless America. Help us and save us. Amen. Uh-oh. Hmm. Here come the first. Here come the first. Come Here first. come the first. <laughs> All right, stop right there. In the name of the law, now get your hands up. Come Everett. on, get them up. A little higher. Ever, ever. Put that dead blame gun away. Why don't you go over yonder and straighten out them luminarios? I'll handle this. Uh. All right, boys. Officer, oh, this may not seem to appear what it is underneath. No way. I think that you boys better come along with me. <laughs> you trying to wake up everybody in town? No, sir. No, sir. I sure had it rough. I'm just sorry that I had to spoil your fun. Why, I'd be the last person in the world to throw a couple of war veterans in jail on New Year's Eve. It's all right, Captain. You're just doing your job. We haven't seen each other since the prison camp in Korea. Uh, I just got over my amnesia, and they sent me off to Vietnam. I sure feel sorry for you fellas. You sure had it right. Yeah. Yes, sir, we have. Would you like to see where I got it in the lane? Oh, no, thanks, no, thanks. I, I'm just sorry that... Uh, I had to do what I had to do, that's all. It's all right, sir. You're just like us. Duty comes first. Duty first, Captain. Look, boys, you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just stay inside, huh? Captain. You 
know who I really miss? Oh. Les Paul and Mary Ford. Pregnant. The world's becoming feminized. Right. All right. Men have got to take over. Stop this pussy putting around. All right. Hey, hmm. I got an idea. What? Let's go out in the streets and get this whole movement started. Right. Shake the complacent bastards into action. Right. But first, let's get some to eat. I'm starved. My head hurts. Huevos rancheros. That's what you need to fix you right up. Oh, God, I hope so. Come on. Coffee gives you wrinkles. Hmm? Wrinkles. Wrinkles? Hmm? It's a fact. Hmm. Hey. Joe, you can't eat that without hot sauce, boy. Here. I'll fix you right up there. Are you good? Mm. You don't have trouble mm. with that. We like the old bull weevil. <laughs> Just looking for a home. Mm. My dad built up a business from scratch. Nothing. Since he's been gone, I just... Watched it dwindle away. The old man was a shoemaker. Yeah, he had a little shop. You know, one time I asked him, I said, Bob, what do you want in the whole wide world? You know what he said? Hmm. And he looked me right in the eye and he said, Joseph, I want to make a fine pair of shoes. Something. That beautiful. I mean, he knew. That's all he really wanted. I know. Oh, I know. What? Well, my dad was about ten feet tall to me. I mean, when I was a kid, it always seemed to me he lived in a giant world among giant men and giant machinery. <laughs> Never knew how to show his affection to me. Anyway, he took me on this deer hunt. With some oil man, some cronies here. I never told you about this. Well, he was down near Bandera on a stand one cold autumn morning. But all of a sudden, this ten-point buck jumps up. He's about, oh, about 150 yards off. My dad motioned, and I said, thank you. Well, I shot him. At first, I thought I'd missed him. He run like hell about 50 yards, and then he dropped. Hmm. I shot him right through the heart. <laughs> My dad is pretty excited, I'll tell you. He kept yelling, great shot, great shot, boy. <laughs> Later, he's watching me skin this old buck. I was looking into the big brown eyes of this deer that run 50 yards with a 30 caliber bullet through his heart. And thinking how much grander and more beautiful he was than me. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I felt my dad's hand on my shoulder. And I looked up. He had great big old tears in his eyes. He just Busting with pride and joy. I've never seen him like that before. Well, Joe, I don't deer hunt no more. Three weeks later, my dad was dead. Dropped dead right up on the dairy floor of an oil well. Right up there where he'd spent all his life. Maybe I let him down. I don't 
No, I guess I have. I just hope, though, that you understand. There I go. <laughs> Balling again. <laughs> Come on, old son. Let's take a drive up in the mountains, huh? Okay. Yeah. Listen, kid, you're the one who's pregnant, not I. Sure, you're in worse shape than all of us. You're a divorced woman with two kids, and you're still in love with your ex-husband. And you're miserable. Well. Okay. Let's, uh, assume that I'd taken back. Let's just assume, mind you. Stop assuming. Stop playing games. If you want him back, you can get him back. And just how do I go about doing that? Help him. Don't buck him. Forget your pride. Take him in your arms and tell him you dig him. Cry if you have to. Get down on your knees. Tell him you're all the awful things he says you are. Be honest. You've got to be kidding. Well, I don't know how it was with you. You and Sugar split up, but... Uh... Boy, I can't make another mistake like that. I just couldn't take it. I, I know, I know. And this girl, she's... Charlie, she's really got to me in a, in a different... In a, in a wild kind of a way. I, oh, I don't know if it's because I want to rebound from Marcy. Or lonely or horny? Yeah, horny. <laughs> can't get her out of my head. I know. She's a... She's a very... Special kind of a little person. Oh, she is, Charlie. She is. I... Man, I don't know if I can handle it. I wish I could help you, Joe. I really do. Yeah, I... sure do, too. Hey, look at them kids down there. Little yeah. rascals. Yeah. Hey, let's go down there and challenge them, huh? Show them what real war is all about, won't they? Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, let's go. Come on. Come on, let's go. Let's... Come on. Hey, hey, kids. You want to have a... You want to have a fight with us? You wanna, we're going to challenge you to fight, OK? All you kids get against us, OK? OK? Listen, wait a minute. we got to get some ammunition, Joe. Sure. All right? Okay. Listen, get over there. we get some snowballs here, OK? OK. Wait a minute. That I think we did. Oh. 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 <laughs> Officer, we'd like to report a mugging. Invite those people? Uh, gotta be the wrong house. Must be.
talk to you. Darling, I, uh, um, been doing some, uh, thinking about, uh, us, and, uh, uh, well, I, 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 I'm willing to discuss our situation, if, if you are. What you got up your sleeve? Oh, nothing. It's just that, uh, well, we were partners once, and uh, I thought we could, uh, well, uh, have a, a, a meeting of the board, huh? Come on. The only time your wife invites you in the bedroom these days is uh, for a business conference. Hell, I can't even take care of myself. I didn't ask you to marry me. I just asked you to love me. Charlie. Hmm? Charlie. Hmm? Charlie, I've been a horrible, spoiled, selfish bitch, and and I, I, want, I want you to forgive me and take me back. You know I picked you up for just one reason. Wanting someone isn't wrong or evil. My darling, I'll be so, I'll be so good to you if you take me back. I'll never, never, never lock you out again, and you'll be. You'll be too tired from loving me to even think of another woman. Oh, Charlie, please, take me back. Oh, please. Oh, I wish I had a witness to this. Sugar, honey, get up from there. What if somebody came in? Oh, you love me even a little bit. Oh, darling, you know I do. I never loved all those other gals. I just... Oh, no, no, don't talk about it ever. I never loved anybody but you. Look, look at the ring. I never took that ring off. Oh, Charlie. You think I'm fat? Oh, no, honey, you just... Oh, do you still desire me? Oh, you know I do. Well, I... I love you... passionately, and I desire you passionately, and I only wish that I could prove it. Oh, darling, I do, I do. Oh, you can, you can! Oh, uh, sweetheart, uh, not now. Oh, uh, wait, wait! I can't, I can't! Oh, Jerry! I don't believe in free love. I mean, love's not free. You have to earn it, work for it, pay for it. Well, I believe in God. I believe in the sanctity of marriage. I believe in work. All the things you people seem to hate. You don't know what I hate. I'm not a category. I'm me. And you're not a category either. I'm only sure of one thing. I... I don't want to hurt you. But I just don't know if I can handle you having someone else's child like this. I don't know if you can handle anything at all. Well, kids, I've decided to take old sugar back. Yeah. Well, uh, let's say we both decided. Congratulations. Uh, Joe boy, uh, I've called a cab. We're gonna clear out of here and let you two get acquainted. I got a split, too. Hey, what you trying to do, make me feel bad? Can you give me a lift to the bus station? Well, sure, hey, but... Joe, why don't you take her, huh? Yeah, well, I'd like to, sugar, but... Uh... Hey. Listen, you two, if we can work things out after all we've been through, you all should at least get a decent start. Right. I stayed for the party. The party's over. Look, if you two are going to get married again, uh, I'd be glad to be your best man. Well, why not? You're still my best friend. No, I'm not. Hmm? I'm your only friend. Yeah. yeah. But think how lucky we are. At least we got one friend. <laughs> <laughs> you take care now. Sugar? Bye, Josephus. We'll be in touch, huh? Sure, sure. Bye. Ginger, I'd be glad to drive you to the station. Why? If something's over, it's over. I'm not good enough for you. I never said that. Okay. So you're uptight. Well, who isn't? So you need some time to get your head together. Fine. But if you ever want to build one of those wonderful new cities or shake the world up at all and make it a better place for kids and people and stuff, then you just got to get it on. And the same thing goes for me. If you don't want to get involved with me, okay. But do yourself a favor. The next time somebody comes along and offers herself to you, you better take her, because you need somebody bad. You know what hurt the most? You never even asked to read one of my poems. You 
you right, kid? You're a good man, Joe Maroney, and I'm a lucky girl. What in the world's the matter with you, boy? We, we left that sweet little old girl standing down there in front of the bus station crying. Don't you know she's crazy about Joe? 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 Now, uh, excuse me. Did you see a, a pretty young girl? She was uh, wearing kind of a hairy, uh, the fuzzy coat. Uh, carrying a guitar and a suitcase. It was an old suitcase. Well, I don't remember a face like that. Yeah, well, I think she got on the, the bus to Colorado. Well, uh, the bus to Colorado left 15, uh, 20 minutes ago. Oh, thank you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Captain Dieter? Oh, no, not you again. Is this your car? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Captain Dieter, this is a matter of life and death. I've, I've got to stop that northbound bus. That's so. Yes, sir. First, I let you off for disturbing the peace. Then you're illegally parked. Now you want me to help you hold up a bus. Yes, sir. Please, you see, there's a, there's a girl in that bus, and, uh, Captain, I don't know exactly where she's going, and I've got to find her, because uh, I've been terrible to her, and I'm an idiot. Well, I'll go along with you on that. Where's that other idiot, that buddy of yours? Well, Charlie? Oh, Captain, he's, uh, he's gone back to Texas. Well, heaven help Texas. <laughs> Please, Captain, uh, if I don't stop the bus, I may lose the girl, and uh, I'd sure hate to do that now. Well, Captain, could you help an old soldier, please? I know. All right. Everything. Thank you take this car on back to the sheriff's office and wait for us yonder, will you? Come on, get in. Uh, he's ready. This old boy here has lost somebody and he thinks that maybe she's on this bus. Well, hurry up, I'm on schedule. Thank you. Ginger, I've got to talk to you. Will you get off the bus with me, please? No. Ginger, please, I've got to talk to you. It's important. Bella, i got to get home. Well, just a minute. Ginger, please. Sheriff, she, uh, she doesn't want to get off the bus. Well, what do you want me to do? Arrest her? You know, boy, she ain't a-breaking the law. Mister, you either pay or get off the bus. Sheriff, could you lend me five dollars? Five dollars? You got my car as security. Here. Thank you, Sheriff. You won't be sorry. Can I go now? I wish you would. I'm going to stay on this bus until you listen to me. Ginger, I'm the most stupid. I know I hurt you. I'm sorry. 
I want you. I want your child. You've got to believe me. You're right. I do need you, but you've got to believe me. What do you need me for? Because I love you. Because I think I need you more than I've ever needed anyone in my life. You don't even know who I am. I only know you're the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me, and I can't let you go now. Mr. I'll never have the chance to know who you are if you leave now. Ginger, you've got to give me a chance. I said sit down in your seat. Uh, just a minute. I want to hear one of your poems. I mean, if you go away, I'll never hear one of your poems. Will you read me a poem? I said sit down. Sorry, folks. I'll get him. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, I've got them. Are you sure you see? Well, I, yes, I'm trying. Yes, ma'am. I think I've got most. I think I've got most of them. She, she had a few. Do you have any more of the pieces? Well, there are only 16 of no. Thank you. Here's two more. Here's the piece. Should be 16. I'm sorry, I really am. Thank you. Okay, folks, let's load it and go. Mr. No thanks. I had my five dollars worth. Sunshine and strawberry strain. 